So this is the HP Pavilion Aero 13, and this caught my interest because of its price, it's affordable, not budget, and its size. I feel like this is a good laptop to talk about right now because a lot of you are going back to school and having something this light is incredible. Like under one kilograms, under 2.2 pounds, carrying this in your bag is gonna feel like nothing. Trust me, if you're a student or someone who has to constantly take their laptop in and out of their bag throughout the entire day, carrying something this light is gonna make you smile. Now this is a magnesium alloy chassis, so it is technically aluminum and there's a bit of lid flex on the top, but not too much to be concerning. It's your typical silver laptop, so nothing too fancy. And of course you have that big HP logo in the middle. There's a good amount of ports. Like for example, you have a full size HDMI, so you can connect it to an external display, a USB port, type C. This is obviously not Thunderbolt, but of course you can charge the laptop using this port as well. Audio jack for your headphones. And then on the right hand side, you have a power connector. This allows the Type-C port to stay free. And then another USB port. Just one quick mention about these USB ports. I'm not a fan of the flap, okay? I've actually broken these flaps before because I'm like a, an ape when I'm sticking things inside of there. So just be careful. If you buy this, take your time, connect the USB properly, and don't be an ape like me. The laptop can be opened up with one hand and it lifts up from the bottom to provide better air support. Just the keyboard is okay. It's not my favorite keyboard. It doesn't have that same feel as the HP Spectre and it shouldn't. This is a more affordable laptop. I just found the keys to be inconsistent. Like the travel distance is good. It's just that some keys were a bit stickier than others and I'd find I'd make typing errors because I'd have to push some of them a bit harder. Touchpad is a fantastic size. There's a lot of space considering that this is a 13 inch laptop. It's not the best touchpad. You know, it's accurate, but it's not as smooth as a proper uh, a touchpad on a more premium machine. Sticker placement, I think I'm gonna cry. I think I'm gonna cry inside. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. The AMD guy is getting paid so much money. And when you pay the sticker guy this kind of cash, you get beautiful work. This is like Michelangelo's paintings. There's a fingerprint scanner on top if you wanna use Windows Hello to log you in. But most importantly, this laptop comes with a 16 by 10 display. And here's the cool thing, they didn't cheese out on this, okay? Like this display is bright. I got over 500 nits of brightness and the color saturation and accuracy is fantastic. Like you buy this, you can feel confident that if you're doing any sort of design work, that this thing is gonna support you. There's a webcam on top if you need to make some conference calls. Pretty impressive considering how skinny these bezels are, but the quality is nothing special. Okay, these speakers are on the bottom of the laptop. They don't get very loud at all. There is absolutely no bass or depth to the sound quality coming out of these things. Everything's been pushed up to the high end to make it sound clear, but they're nothing special. One other thing I forgot to mention, there's a bit of wobble on the display when you open it up. It's, it's not drastic or as bad as like the Gigabyte Aero 15, but something I thought I'd mention. Now my review unit comes with a Ryzen 7 5800U, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 13 inch IPS 16 by 10 display, or you can buy a QHD version of this as well. And of course you have a fast 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. Now this is not the fastest 5800U I've tested. In fact, it's very conservative. A lot of the performance results are reminiscent of last year's 4000 series CPUs. And if you look at synthetic benchmarks, it, you can tell they're being super duper conservative with the thermals. Now, if you're buying this to you know, do work in Photoshop, it'll be fine. It gets pretty good scores. It's gonna offer some great performance when it comes to that. But if you're buying this to, to do some light video editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, not the best laptop to do that. These AMD chips just don't have quick sync. And for some reason, quick sync is still the king when you're using Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, if you're a developer, the 5800U offers eight cores. Again, it provides great performance. And the reason why it's like this is because HP is being super conservative. They're valuing fan noise over everything else, but they're valuing it a bit too much because the thermals never surpass like 66 or 67 degrees Celsius, which is way too low. I feel like there's a little bit more thermal headroom that they can push to offer you, the user, a bit more performance. Now, if you're bringing this to class, fans will always be very respectable. You're not gonna find them to ever get too loud. So overall, it'd be a very good audible experience. 
Taking a look at the inside, not much is upgradable. In fact, the only thing you can swap out is the NVMe SSD, which happens to be 512, but if you want something bigger, you can exchange it. The other thing is the Wi-Fi card. You can swap this out too if you want something different. CPU, GPU is obviously soldered onto the motherboard, pretty standard, but also the RAM. So if you decide to go with eight or 16, you can upgrade it. You're stuck with it for the duration of this laptop's life. Now this battery is about 43 watt hours and the battery life is incredible. Over 12 hours of use before needing to charge, which is great if you're trying to use this thing all day. Honestly, I really like this thing. It's light, it's portable, has fantastic battery life, the display has a good aspect ratio, and it's super bright. But there is another laptop on the market with the exact same price point, maybe 50 bucks more, that comes with an RTX 3050 Ti. The Acer Swift X offers a lot more value for the price. Yes, it doesn't come with the aspect ratio that this guy has, nor is the screen as bright, and it is a bit heavier, but I feel like you're getting a lot more performance for the dollar. So if you care about performance and you're trying to squeeze as much for the price, get the Acer Swift X. If portability, screen quality is more important to you, then I'd gravitate towards the HP Pavilion Aero 13. If you have any more questions or are interested in checking this guy out, there'll be a link in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.